Hang on a second here. I'm looking for my songs. Not that one. Not that one. Let's see. How about this one? Actually, that's not the one I'm looking for either. Let's see. My heart can see when I pause to remember. is a suspending song.
let's see. How about this one? From over hill and plain, there comes a single strain. Tis loyalty, loyalty, loyalty to Christ. Its music rolls along, the hills take up the song of loyalty, loyalty, yes, loyalty to Christ. On to victory, on to victory, cries our great commander. We'll soon possess the land Through loyalty, loyalty, yes, loyalty to Christ Come join our loyal throng We'll rout the giant wrong Tis loyalty, loyalty, loyalty to Christ Where Satan's banners float We'll send the bugle note Of loyalty, loyalty, yes, loyalty to Christ On to victory, on to victory Cries our great commander, great commander. We'll move at his command. We'll soon possess the land through loyalty, loyalty, yes, loyalty to Christ. The strength of youth we lay at Jesus' feet today. His loyalty, loyalty, loyalty to Christ. His gospel we'll proclaim throughout the world's domain of loyalty, loyalty, yes, loyalty to Christ. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. On to victory, on to victory, cries our great commander, Possess the land through loyalty, loyalty, yes, loyalty to Christ. Loyalty. To Christ. Hey, man, here's another one for you. Light in the darkness, say, Lord, day is at hand. See o'er the foaming billows, fair haven's land. Clear was the voyage, sailor, now almost o'er. Safe within the lifeboat, sailor, pull for the shore. Pull for the shore, sailor, pull for the shore. Need not the rolling waves, but bend to the oar. Safe in the lifeboat, sailor, cling to self no more. Leave the poor old stranded wreck and pull for the shore. In the lifeboat sailor, all else will fail. Stronger the surges dash and fiercer the gale. Heed not the stormy winds, though loudly they roar. Watch the bright and morning star and pull for the shore. Pull for the shore, sailor, pull for the shore. Heed not the rolling waves, but down to the oar. Safe in the lifeboat sailor, cling to self no more. Leave the poor old stranded wreck and pull for the shore. Bright gleams the morning sailor, uplift the eye. Clouds and darkness disappearing, glory is nigh. Sing in the light, old sailor, sing evermore. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Pull for the shore. Amen. All right. One more, and then we're going to get to it here. One more. Let's see. My favorite one. This is that warrior song here, and one that you need to hear this afternoon. We're on the 
battlefield for Jesus. Come and join us in the fight. We're marching against Satan and we're standing for what's right. We won't desert nor surrender. We are soldiers till we die. We're on the battlefield for Jesus. Victory is our battle cry. We're on the battlefield for Jesus. Come and join our happy throng. We're blood washed, born again believers, and we sing a joyful song. King Jesus is our mighty captain, and it's him we shall obey. We're on the battlefield for Jesus, winning souls for Christ today. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. We're on the battlefield for Jesus. Come and join us in the fight. Though the enemy be all around us, we shall not be put to flight. By faith we know we have the victory, and no matter what the cost, we will fight to rescue hopeless sinners. Not a soul must ever be lost. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to Beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. That's right. Beneath the cleansing flood. Right there, my friends. The battle is on. The battle is on. And let me tell you, there is a war for men's souls. You heard Alex Jones and other men like that say there's a war on for your mind, right? No, there's a war on for that, but there's a war on for your souls. And it absolutely is. And I'm going to tell you something. You're going to see a contrast here today when I show you this video right here. And if you think I'm militant, well, you got that right. My militancy is with that book right there. I have not in the gospel ministry harmed a hair on one person's head, but I have preached the unsearchable riches of Christ. I have preached the gospel with militancy and boldness because that's all the weapons of the warfare that God has given me to use is that King James Bible, that prayer, and that armor, and to go out and to battle for the Lord. And let me tell you something. It is a war. Some of you people have no idea what goes on out there when you're evangelizing the lost. When you're lifting up your voice like a trumpet, when you're preaching the gospel to people, you have no idea. And I'm speaking really to pastors that might be listening because they will not confront evil. They will not deal with those people on the streets. Therefore, they don't have interactions like this. They don't have charismatic witches coming up to them. They don't have witches that come up to them and deal with them like that. They don't face that. So they think, oh, that was all just New Test. Simon Sorcerer and all that stuff. Simon the Sorcerer and all that stuff. That was just... That was just New Testament times. That's not right now. Well, friend, let me tell you something. We are in New Testament times. That's where we're at. Brother Paul always says that. And that's true. We are in New Testament times. We are still in New Testament times. You know, we, we are still in those New Testament times. Right now, the battle is on. 
The battle is absolutely on for the souls of men. And there's a war out there. I'm going to tell you what. It's not a war between the atheist, the evolutionist, as much, and the Christians. No, it's a war with that antichrist religion that Ahab and Jezebel, that spirit of whoredom that's out there right now. That's the battle and the war that is on. The fight is on. Man, they're telling me, hey, listen, man, you're you're too loud here. That 90% decibel. Siri keeps telling me my noise level's too loud. All right, Siri. Let me tell you what. You need to put your earplugs on. That's what you need to do. Get out of my face and leave me alone. That's what you need to do. Virtual assistant. No, that's nothing but a virtual spy is what that is. That's all right. I, the Antichrist already knows what I'm doing. I'm preaching against his kingdom, so I ain't worried about hiding out from anybody. I'm right in plain sight. Best place to be is right in plain sight. Right? That's where Jesus was all the time. He's right in plain sight. And, they, and, when, they're, and, and when their hour of darkness was come, then God let him take him. But before then, God didn't let him. Amen. That's the way it's going to be, friend. Man, how y'all doing out there? I can't say hi to any of you. I don't know who's on there, but uh, I wish I could. But we're going to develop something about that. We're going to figure the, all that out. Uh, and, you know, there's another article that I might bring to you, too, today about this witchcraft and really teaching you. I, I hope that if this program has taught you anything, if this broadcast has taught you anything, that the years that I've done this and the teachings that I've tried to give you, it's that you would understand what real witchcraft is. And I think, I really believe that's why God allowed witches to infiltrate this church and for me to deal with them and for God to deal with them and for Satan to attack me and for God to make me to stand and to survive. That way, that way, uh, we would be, I would be able to better understand that attack and that warfare, that I would not be deceived by that, but I would understand what true spiritual warfare is about and, and and what it's really like and who these people really are. Listen, Satan's not an atheist. The Antichrist kingdom is not atheistic. It's not. It's full of devils and spirits speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. As you see this man right here, this is Ahab and his wife is Jezebel. And you're going to watch some stuff today when I show you this video, and you're going to watch this man is preaching to us about love the whole time. And you're going to see the phony spirit or the phony fake anti-Christian spirit come out in this man. And show who he really is and who they really serve. And I'm going to have to give you a backdrop of what's going on here so you understand what's happening. There is, you know, I wonder if I can, let me see, let me see something here. We joke about this, but, uh, oh, I know where that is. Let's see. You know, we joke about this, and I've talked to you about this, but this right here is intent. This is not intense spiritual warfare. And he's telling him about these, these encounters with Bigfoot that he's having. The Nephilim, 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 Nephilim. And I lifted up my sword. Crazy. And I was like, and he was like, and I was like, <laughs> I'm getting my shotgun. I'm getting my 45. Tent spiritual warfare. <laughs> Give me my gun. Give me my 50 cal. Give me my my Uzi, whatever I got. Just give me something, and I'm blowing these things away. The okay. Brain. So you aimed your prayer. What are you, like a prayer? You got a prayer bazooka? You got a prayer <laughs> missile? I aimed in strong spiritual warfare. I aimed my prayers at that side. Boom, and I fired. This sounds like intense spiritual warfare. He did spiritual warfare. Prayer and, 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 and strong spiritual warfare, I guess. 
whatever that is. Those are the key words. Strong spiritual warfare. I'm going to take my guns and I'm going to get my car and I'm going to go home. I'm going home. I'm not sitting in the woods with a bunch of whatever they are. And we did strong spiritual warfare. Strong spiritual warfare. Yeah, and yeah. I did strong warfare. Because we're in strong spiritual warfare. Go <laughs> home. If there was some Bigfoot crazy psychotic devilish creature out there that was growling and grunting and backmasking Led Zeppelin songs to me all night, I- I'm not going to sleep, bro. No way, I- dude. I'm-, I'm leaving. I'm not sleeping with that thing there. We both did intense spiritual warfare. And I saw golden roosters. When Bigfoot didn't touch me and left me alone, I did strong spiritual warfare. Bigfoot ran. If the struggle is real. That's the truth, man. They won't be hairy. They won't stink. Intense spiritual, spiritual warfare. warfare. Glory in the upper bowl. And he shoots the glory at him. And glory in the lower bowl. And he... What? Tie you can... <laughs> This Bigfoot was talking to my mind telepathically. Okay, that it was in a biological container. What are hoops? Like, whoop, whoop. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that is not intense spiritual warfare. Let me show you what is. When I show you this, you're going to see this is a battle between light and darkness. This is a battle between that antichrist system, that false profession, that lying spirit, right? Those that pronounce good upon evil. Those that pronounce evil to be good. That's what you're going to see. Isaiah 5.20, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This is what this false, charismatic, the woman was running around, Jezebel was running around speaking in tongues. See him over there in the corner? See him checking us out. See her dressed like a harlot. See, this man thought I was afraid of him. When I know the Lord led me to call them Ahab and Jezebel, and that spirit was revealed, and then that spirit couldn't hide anymore under a phony Christianity that act like it loved people and that we're all for love. We're all for love. We love you. Those people, those Christians that are preaching the gospel up there, telling me to repent, they don't love like we love. Well, you're right. We don't love like you love. We don't love like you do at all. We don't love like you do. And don't worry, I'm going to get to the video. Let me show you how they want to love. Let me show you how they want to love. Here's how they want to love. Okay? This is how they want to love. Just to watch the evening news And what I saw on there Made me want to crawl right through the tube Cause they were talking about this wedding But they only show two men So I fired off this little email With some words just for them Come on down to the farm Come on out to the barn Yeehaw! You won't find two roosters Walking arm in arm They could make no chicken They don't lay no eggs to have when God said love your brother, I don't think he meant like that. Well, in that little email, I began to tell them how two mares can't make a stallion. 
two bulls can't make a cow. That's right. It takes a male and a female for the species to go on. And there'll be no reproduction if the plumbing is all wrong. So come on down to the farm. Come on out to the barn. You won't find two roosters walking arm in arm. They couldn't make no chicken. They don't lay no eggs to hatch. When God said love your brother. our children all about the birds and the bees now the world keeps telling them you can do anything you please we need to get back to the bible back to the gospel truth because a million happy roosters won't make a single chicken so come on down to the farm come on out to the barn you won't find two roosters walking arm in arm they couldn't make no chicken they don't lay no eggs to hatch when god said love your brother i don't think he meant like that when god said love your brother I think I think they're right. God didn't mean anything like that, did he? That's right. Well, these guys are telling these sodomite children. Now, these are a bunch of transgender sodomite children. Now, you're not going to see it in this video, and I wish I should have had Andrew splice in other video of these children completely surrounding us and screaming profanities at us showing pornography magazines to us, um, being perverted in front of us, threatening us, all that kind of good stuff. And the adults, actually, were the threateners. The snowflakes weren't. They just kind of melted and did perverted stuff. Well, now what I'm about to show you is real witchcraft. Lest you be confused at what witchcraft really is. Okay? You know, you're going to find out here. You're going to see what witchcraft really is. So you get the absolute real understanding of what witchcraft is. Why does that matter? Why is that so important? Because so you're not deceived. This, which is always misrepresent the Bible, they manipulate emotions they misrepresent the scriptures they feed somebody a false gospel they deny the bible but they do it all in the name of christ they all do it in christ's name this is why they are anti-christ Look at this. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. They will come in Christ's name. Matthew 24 warns us. Look at this. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect behold i have told you before believe it not there shall arise these false christs and and, and i'm i'm leading up to showing you this video so you understand what's going on I'm giving you scripture. For there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. When you deny the Lord, it's not that you're denying the existence of Jesus Christ. No, what you're doing is denying his lordship. 
you're denying his lordship. Look at this. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, wherever you have heard that it should come, even now is it already in the world. Then he explains... That true spirit to deny Christ in the flesh, that he came in the flesh, and that and he saved men from their sin, he saves men from their sins. He says, You're of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We have overcome the world, you overcome the power of sin through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Any man that says he loves God but continues in sin is not of the Father, but is of the world. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, what you're going to see in this video, you are going to see this couple over here, they are going to walk over and they are going to, these children over here that you're going to see over here, these children, uh, these young people are 15, 16 years old, something like that. They're lost and dead in their sins. They are sodomites, homosexuals, transgenders, non-binary all, whatever other adjectives you want to use to describe them. One of them was my next door neighbor. I won't say which one. But one of them was pronounced a blessing by this. This man right here will run this young man through a prayer that is a professing sodomite. And then he tells him afterwards that God loves you just the way you are. So you stay the same. He tells him the opposite of what the Bible says. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin and live any longer therein? He tells them to stay in your sin. Stay in your sin. God loves you just the way you are. That's what he's telling them. Paul, the, one of the street preachers here, Brother Paul, is going to go over and talk to that young man after that man prays that prayer, right, that kid? And he asks him, do you have any intention on turning away from homosexuality? Oh, no. I have no intention of doing that. He was going to keep living his own lifestyle and doing what he wants. And all that man did was give him assurance in his wicked life. Do you understand that? That's all he did. But it's worse. He came to oppose the gospel. And they opposed the preaching of the gospel. They opposed the gospel itself. And that's what they're doing. So when I show you this, you're going to understand the real spirit of witchcraft. Now, what's interesting to me is in Paul, or not Paul, but Joshua always says this. He says, when Pastor Cooley gets up there, or when Brother Paul gets up there, all hell just breaks loose. And Joshua called it. He said, when, when he gets up, when Pastor's going to get up there, I don't know what it is, but every other the guys could preach. But when Pastor gets up there and preaches, all of them come out. They just come out of everywhere. And I'll tell you why. Because God called me to that town. That's why. And it happens a lot of places we go. But... The attack is on the preacher. The attack is on the gospel. The attack is to attack me. Uh, the gospel that I preached, my Lord and Savior. By bringing up a false Christ is what they do. Which shall deceive many, the Bible says. The Bible says that false Christ shall deceive many. And those prophets, those false prophets, shall 
deceive many. It is what they will do. So, I'm going to put on my handy-dandy headphones. And I'll fast forward some of it, but I'll play some of the preaching. Because all I'm doing here, we come back after the afternoon. Or maybe we were getting ready to leave. I don't know. We were getting ready to leave. Uh, right before we were getting ready to leave here in a little while uh, to take a break and then come back out to preach. Satan sends by his false prophets, the fowls of the air. Because these kids have been getting a gospel witness for two days now. Because we were out there Friday night and we we're out there. They're getting a gospel witness. We're preaching the Bible to them. We're calling them repentance. By the way, one young man, I won't mention his name, but uh, that Brother Jacob and I have been talking to for a while. Uh, I saw him on the bike trail today. And I preached the gospel to him again. I witnessed him. I gave him a very strong and good witness. And uh, I was praying. And once in a while when I'm walking and praying, God allows somebody to interrupt me. And that's okay. That's God's business. He knew. And I was praying along, and here come this young man. And he couldn't believe the way those kids were treating us. And he's a religious young man, but he's not saved. And I, I was able to give him the gospel and tell him that he needs to make a decision for Christ. He must make a decision for Christ. He must be born again. You, young man, must be born again. You must be forgiven of your sins. You must come to Christ. And I, ta- I was able to talk to him about the depravity of man, the fallen nature of man, and really deal with that. Here we go. Ye are the salt of the earth, said Jesus to his disciples. So understand this, I'm just reading Matthew chapter 5 to them. And I decided just to read that when I came back. And I decided just to read that. And I'm telling you what, the fowls of the air came out. And it's funny because the verse that I was on, when they when they walked up there, I'm going to show you what verse I was on. And they, these people were living out these verses right in front of me. Uh, Let's see. Here's what verse I was on when the thick of it was going on. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? If the salt, those that witness for Christ, lose that savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This is the gospel. You can see why Paul is watching so intently this, this, this religious false prophet right here in red that is talking to this, this young man. And he's trying to convince this young man. That we preach and Jesus pronounces a blessing on those that preach his gospel. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. You see, the Bible told us that men would hate the gospel, that men would hate the preaching of God's word, that men would revile, they would mock it, they would hate the preaching of the gospel. I want you to think about this is a real life example of that very thing right in front of us. So literally right in front of us, we're seeing it. They would turn against. They would rend it. They would hate it. And Jesus said, rejoice and be exceeding glad. That's why when the martyrs went to the stake, they rejoiced as they were being burnt at the stake. They had no regrets. 
but that they preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they rejoiced and were exceeding glad, for great was their reward in heaven. They let their light so shine before men, that men may see their good works and glorify their Father which is in heaven. So all that these do that oppose the gospel, they fulfill prophecy of what Jesus said would come to pass, what Jesus said would happen. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Jesus Christ saved my soul 20 years ago, and he didn't save it for me to go hide my faith in a church building. But he saved my soul to come out in the middle of this town and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, warning every man, calling every man to repentance, to let your light so shine before men that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So that's why we're here. And when you revile us, all it does is cause us to be more encouraged to preach the word, to be instant. In season, out of season, to reprove, rebuke. Okay, right there, he's telling him to pray this prayer. Now, let me tell you something. This is a witch right here. Now, I'm not saying that everybody that ever uh, had somebody... Um, pray a prayer as a witch. That's not what I'm saying. This man knows that this kid's in sin and he doesn't want to get out of sin. He knows that this man's a sodomite. He's approaching him because he's like, those guys, those, those Christians over there are mean, but I'm going to go really minister to this kid. I'm going to make him twofold a child of hell. I'm going to really minister to this kid. So what does he do? He makes him comfortable in his sin. He makes this kid enjoy his sin. So he grabs him by the hand and he says, pray this prayer. He doesn't deal with this kid being lost. He doesn't deal with this kid needing to be forgiven of his sins. He doesn't deal with this kid being dead in trespasses and sins. No. He doesn't deal with this kid being guilty. Right? All he does... All he does is sink him. All he does is sink him down into his sin more and make him comfortable in it. Out of season to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all law and suffering of doctrine for the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they shall be turned unto fables. They shall turn away. They shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they shall be turned unto fables. Paul's telling them, you, sir, are a false prophet. That's exactly what you are. They made those kids comfortable in their sin, and they made the gospel look evil. They made the gospel look evil. That's right. Repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, neither do men light a candle. It says, let your all the least of the kingdom of heaven. He shall be called the least. So this is his wife right here, right? And I don't need to say much about her, but there she is. These girls are coming along, and they're laughing. These are little witches, and they're, they're basically like this one is. She's just laughing at what this man did because they have no intention of turning to Christ. None of them have any intention of that. It was all a game, and they're okay with playing this guy's game. Because he's a witch, and it goes along with their theology about God. Least, but whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Preach the word, 
be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Seared with the hot iron. First Timothy chapter four, God verse so number loved twenty. The world do you know first Timothy? Begotten son, do you know it? That whom should you ever, false devil? Do you know it? Should, first Timothy. Are you name calling now? Yeah, you're a devil. Are you name calling now? Watch this. That was a biblical name. I said you're a devil. That's exactly what he was. He's got a devil inside of him. But guess what? You're gonna see, you're gonna see his whole wovey dovey thing. You're gonna see wovey dovey go out the door here, okay? You're gonna watch the fake wovey dovey go out the door. That's that's literally what you're gonna watch. Watch fake wovey dovey go out the door. All right, just remember I said that fake wovey dovey is going bye bye. Watch. I just said it. You are a devil possessed I man. You in the name I don't care Jesus. what you rebuke in. You have no power. I have God's Jesus. word. What do you have? Your fake words. I, no, you you have your fake, fake charismatic Jesus sodomite words. You have your fake world. charismatic sodomite Chapter words. Louder fake words. Fake Chap sodomite words. That's right. all you have. Louder doesn't make you That's right. right. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Yeah. For men shall be lovers of hey. their own selves. Hey. He's saying it's hate when I'm preaching what the Bible says. I'm reading Bible. Let me show you. You know what? You know the verses probably, but watch. I'll show you what I'm I'm doing. But do you see how witches misrepresent? He's a witch. He's a charismatic witch, and he's misrepresenting everything that's being said because that's what witches do. I know because I've had them attack me. I've had them, in, I've had them infiltrate this church. I've had everything that you try to say get twisted around, and you're not going to get anywhere with them. You just give the truth. You full steam ahead. Keep pressing on. That's all you do, because you're not going to convince people once they're under the spell of that. Once they're under that spell, like that man put that kid under that spell. See, I was reading this. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. See, I was just reading Bible. He's saying it's hate. Wait, what kind of Christian says if you read those Bible verses and you preach them, that's hate? What kind of born-again Bible believer says that's hate? Well, they don't. Well, who does that? Witches do that. Witches. That's what witches do. And that's what charismatics are. They are witches. Hey, boasters, hey, blasphemers, hey, disobedient hey, to parents, hey, unthankful, hey, unholy. Hey. Here, here's his mantra. You see it? You see his little satanic mantra? Saying the same word over and over again? That's charismania. That's their chanting. That's his little, that's his little witch call. Hey, Without natural hey, affection. Hey, false hey, accusers. Hey, that's hey, right. Hey, now the Spirit hey, speaketh expressly hey, that in the hey, latter times hey, some shall depart from hey, the faith, giving hey, heed to seducing God spirits is, and doctrines of devils, speaking love, lies and hypocrisy, love, having their conscience here with a hot love, iron, forbidding to marry and love, commanding love to abstain from lying. meats, no, which no, God no, hath no, created no, to be received with thanksgiving. Never, never. You see what he's calling love? Do you understand what he's calling love there? I mean, do you see? He's calling love what the world calls love. God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He's saying it's really love to accept the sodomite lifestyle, to accept the LGBTQ, to accept the vulgar lifestyle, to accept the sins of this world is actually loving. God says 
It is hating them because like Paul said, you're lying to them. Love is telling the truth. Love is not lying. Love is being truthful. But what are they doing? They're lying to them. They are lying to them. And they're sealing them. Now, he says that when he held his hand over there and he says that prayer, in that form, that was a spell. I'm telling you, it was a spell. That's exactly what it was. It's, it's like, a, it's like a, an incantation, so to speak. When he came over and you're going to see him touch their heads and do all this stuff, it's because he's a witch. And that's what charismatics, you know, remember charismatics, they, they like to touch everybody. They got to they gotta put those spirits on you. They got to put their mojo on you. That's what they got to do. They got to put their little satanic mojo on you. Well, I'm just reading Bible. I'm just, I'm giving them Bible. If you know, I knew that the only thing that was going to drive those devils away was Bible. I, I know it. I know it. It's the only way. Every time I've confronted them, it's the Bible that drives them away. It's God's word that drives them away. It, eventually, the devils can't handle it. It's an authority issue. They Once the word of God is out there, and once the word of God is given in boldness and authority, they have to leave. Why? Because they, they don't have any legal authority. They can't stay. They have no power to stay there because it's all territorial. That's how devils work. And I'm not being charismatic. I'm being biblical. Let me show you. Here it is. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil... As a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Satan is stalking about. Satan's kingdom, his devils, are stalking about. His false prophets are stalking about. What makes him leave? Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You have to resist them and stand against them in the faith with the scriptures. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We don't, we don't move. We make them move. Bold as a lion. Of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. If he be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If thou put the brethren to remember... Who made you the judge? Now Paul's going over and he's going to ask that young man, or he already did, one of the two. Who made you the judge? He prayed the prayer. He prayed the prayer. Yeah, so what? To these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather in the godliness. For bodily exercise. See, Paul says, you got a Christian sodomite down there now. Size profit little, but godliness is profitable to all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we will labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is this. You know why Paul said that to him? Because he went down there and that kid told him, yeah, I want to keep living the way I'm living. I don't want to change. I, I don't have any desire to be different. We never said a man has the power to change himself. God has the power to change him. He's saying he prayed this prayer, but he don't have no desire to follow Christ. But what's this man telling him? This false prophet is telling him, dude, you're fine. You just keep staying the way you are. So he Christianized, he Christianized sodomy. He Christianized the LGBTQ. 
That is a witch. Do you understand? That is a witch. Now, I'm not done with this video yet, but I'm going to show you. This is a witch. Okay? This is a witch. Do you understand? This is a witch. Okay? This is a witch. A very wealthy one. Wealthy witches. A billionaire witch. Right? So you see, the, these are all witches. And this. This man. Save her of all of men. Especially of those that believe. I turn. This man in the red, this charismatic preaching the false gospel, is a witch. They're preaching the same thing. They're preaching something perverse, something that is not according to godliness. It is not according to the doctrines of the Bible. They are preaching Antichrist. These things command and teach, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying out of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy prophecy I pray that you to all. <laughs> Take heed unto thyself and unto the, the doctrine. I love you, brother. Continue God bless you. I hope they repent. Thou thou preaching the Bible. So, so get this straight. This is a witch. Why is this a witch? Sodomites, perverts, LGBTQ, uh, all of those perverted people down there, he's not telling them to repent. He's telling us to repent for preaching the gospel to them. For preaching the law, a schoolmaster, to bring men to Christ, he is telling us to repent of preaching the Bible. That is a witch. That's who that is. And Jacob ain't having it. Look at him. Look at that serious look by Jacob right there. Look at that look. Save thyself and them that hear thee. Okay, now it's about to get real. Remember Wubby Dubby? Remember him? Remember Wubby Dubby? Wubby Dubby charismatic man? Remember him? Well, in a minute, I'm going to show you Wubby Dubby charismatic man. And he ain't so Wubby Dubby no more. His Wubby Dubby went out the dough. He was done. He was done with all that Wubby Dubby stuff. Especially when that spirit got called out. You know, Satan doesn't like being revealed for who he is. When he gets revealed, he gets angry. Anytime Satan... See, Satan is a master concealer. Shrouded by mystery. Right? Mystery. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, right? Or let's look at uh, Revelation 75. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. I will tell thee the mystery of, I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her. Mystery. Mystery. Shrouded in mystery. 22 times. Always a mystery. I'm going to play a song here, and then we're going to get back to it, all right?
Emmanuel's veins And sinners plunged beneath that flood Lose all their guilty stains Lose all their guilty stains Lose all their guilty stains Shall be till I die. All right, back to it, friends. Now you will see the exciting next half of this. And it is exciting. Uh, it's sad. Uh, we get no pleasure. I mean, these aren't planned. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. We never know what's going to happen. I'll tell you, when we went out on the street, we thought the police was going to challenge us uh, because they basically threatened us if we used the amplification, which we ended up using two nights in a row, that if we used it, they were going to give cite us and we're going to be ready to go to court and fight and win but they didn't thank god and we used it the police weren't anywhere around and we just did what we do and we were surrounded by people the whole time but god got the victory amen god gave the victory all right here is witchcraft here is mr wovey dovey charismatic man that loves everybody Here's when the spirit gets called out, when the mystery is revealed. Here is when the devil gets mad. We don't want God rebuke God, God an elder, God. but it treat him as a father, God and the younger men as brethren, the elder there. women as mothers, yeah. the younger as sisters, down there. with all purity. Honor widows that are You're widows indeed. Devil. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn there can first be no to show piety at home between and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable what before God. Hath Christ? Okay, so I'm going to get down from the pulpit because I knew that I needed to and I needed to deal with this. Uh, I knew that I needed to and I and I did. That's just what I did as a pastor and as the leader uh, that God has made me to be. I did. And it's not that's not being proud or anything. It's just being straightforward. That's just what needed to be done. And I had to go after that spirit. 
and get it out of there. But he's still a sodomite. So he's yeah. saying, who are you, the but this guy that lives for Christ for 20 hey, years Jesus. is not hey, a saved man. Hey, you know what? 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 Here's what you do. Turn yeah. your back on him. Jesus just turn your back on him and walk say? away. Well, I, try, I don't think he care what Jesus says. He doesn't, says. He doesn't know the Bible. The Bible. You're wasting your time. Turn your back on him. You're wasting your time. You're wasting false charismatic prophets like you. They won't do this on camera. What? Because I'll roast their ass. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, listen. Okay, did you see the, did you hear him? He said he would roast my you-know-what. Well, he said that, okay, um, and the reason he said that was because he has a devil in him, and he's revealing who he is. Listen to your speech. Ah, thy speech berayeth thee, my friend. You just, you, just, you just proved yourself to be a false prophet right there. Good job. Good job, false prophet. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jezebel. Goodbye, Ahab and Jezebel. Whoa, did you see that? Whoa, look at that. Whoa, what's up with that? Oh, no. Ahab done got mad. What happened? What happened? Well, let me, let me show you what happened. I'll show you what happened. This is what happened. I called it out. If we open it up, it's going to ooze. And if we open it up, it's Is it weird that that guy has red on too? The TD Jakes has red on. Is that kind of weird? Is it weird that that other guy had red? Isn't that weird? It's going to leak. And if we open it up, it's going to smell. And we open it up, it's going to hurt. But if we don't open it up, if we don't open it up, it won't get better. It won't get better. It'll just stay bitter. And if it stays bitter, it won't get better. It'll and if you got bitter, batter, bitter, that's not good. Have you ever had bitter, batter, bitter? Bit, batter that was bitter. Bat, never mind. Stay bitter. It'll stay bitter and resentful and angry because nobody told you it was going to be like this. Man, nobody told that guy he couldn't be sleeping around his wife and buy her a Ferrari to pay her off after he done slept around at her and stay in the pulpit. Nobody told that guy that. If somebody would have told him that, he wouldn't have done that. But see, he's got the same sexual perverted spirit that that old boy does on the street. Same spirit. Preaching the same message. See, T.D. Jakes came that night to this place. He came that night to this place to make sure this man didn't get removed from his pulpit and put his blessing on what God cursed. See, this, this preacher right here was going to get kicked. A lot of people were mad at him, and he should have been kicked out of his pulpit because he slept around on his wife. And, it was on, and, and there was video of an audio of, of, of what he had done and all that stuff. Um, and... T.D. Jakes was there to run cover for him. See the false prophets? False spirits, they love the sexual sins. They're okay with them. They're spiritual per, uh, porn artists and physical porn artists. They're spiritual perverts and physical perverts, both. And I don't even want to open this up in public because I know how deep it is. But the Lord, while the anointing is passing by, there's too much anointing in this room to minister to everybody else and leave you sitting over there festering, festering. and festering and you know, festering. You know, he's talking about a spiritual zit. He said it was festering it. If you open it up, it's going to ooze. If we don't open it up, it won't get better. It'll stay bitter. It's going to stink when you open it up. So he's going to fix it. Especially, especially, you said it in a joking way, but especially when the spirit of suicide hangs around your house oh, trying no. to get you back. Right there. Oh! <laughs> this is, hey, this is what happened with that video made that man mad. Of suicide hangs around your house trying to get you back. Oh! 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 I call it out! 
Very down. None did it. There's the hooker boots. Don't forget about the hooker boots. There's the chanting, saying the same thing over and over again like that guy was on the street. She's a fan of it. Softly the music plays. He's coming back in for round two. Fight! You don't get to run, mm -mm. you don't get to hide, you don't get to quit, you don't get to faint. You don't get to do any of that. Because it's not a stage that you prayed for, it's not a building that you prayed for, it's not an opportunity that you prayed for. You've always wanted God to make a man out of you. And he's using the stage to make a man out of you. He's using the building to make a man out of you. He's using the opportunity to make a man out of you. Standing back up on his feet. Get it back, back up. up on his feet. You're gifted. You're anointed. You've always been gifted because you've been broken. You've always been gifted because you've been broken. You've always been gifted because you've been broken. And you know how to flow. You, you do. Know how to bless everybody. And you know how to flow. Yo, everybody got your gift, but nobody got you. Nobody got you. Nobody got you. Why didn't they get any chew? Nobody got you. They got your gift, but they never got you. Look they at the head. They're rubbing oh, his bald head. Leave his bald head alone. Quit picking on that. You. He's using it to touch you. He's going to make a man. That's right. Tell him, TD. All right. So here we go. Watch this. Oops. Hang on. Listen to your speech. Ah, thy speech berayeth thee, my friend. You just, you just, you just proved yourself to be a false prophet right there. Good job. Good job, false prophet. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jezebel. Goodbye, Ahab and Jezebel. I said goodbye, I'm Ahab. I'm not that safe, son. I'm not that safe. Call my wife. I'm not that safe, son. I'm not that saved. Why something else? Call you're, my wife. You're, you said you're, look at that. What happened to Wovey Dovey? By the way, she was acting like a Jezebel, speaking in tongues, pronouncing blessings on what God curses. Not, you said you're not. I'm not that safe. Oh, you're That's not that safe. Progress. You're not that safe. Say, call my wife another okay. name. So what, what you're call saying is that you're not name. a real Christian. Call my wife another name. What happened to love thy brother? Call, I, I'm telling you, I'll drop you. Call what, my what, wife another name. What happened name. to love thy brother? That's what I thought. What happened to thy brother? You think I'm scared of you? Call my wife another name. We'll see nah. how scared you are. I'm not scared. Call her another name. Don't spit on me. Don't spit on me. That's what I thought. Where is your love? No, he's not a Christian. He just proved. He just proved. He just proved it. You are a wicked hypocrite. I'm trying to save you from hearing profanity. But he said, if you really? Call so that's okay. So it's okay for you to threaten us? It's okay for Watch. you to threaten us? Watch. You're pronouncing cursings on people. That's what witches do. And that's what you are, a bunch of witches. You're a bunch of witches. That's exactly what you are. You're a bunch of witches. I bet you I just said you're a bunch of witches. You just did. I just did. If you had common sense, you'd be able to figure that out. 
Amen. But guess what? They're gone. They're down the road, and I was still preaching the gospel right there. And we kept preaching the gospel there, and they left. Why? Because you got to stand up to those devils. You don't let them. You don't let them control the situation. You don't let them push you around. The Bible says, "Resist him steadfast in the faith." But what he tried to get me to do was call his wife a name again, uh, or call her a Jezebel again, and I wasn't led to. I wasn't afraid of that man at all, period. Believe me. And it's probably a problem that I'm not that I'm not afraid. It's probably a problem because I grew up defending myself, so I mean, I'm not there to fight. Do you understand? So my biggest challenge is because I'm not afraid is not to be provoked to anger, never to become physical, and not to provoke others when I know full well I could handle them in a heartbeat, like quickly. But it's not. The, but that's not what we're there for. We wouldn't harm a hair on their head. I had no desire. I was threatened so many times that night and that weekend that people wanted to beat me down and told me they were going to beat me down. Now I'm still standing here and they didn't beat me down. And that's by God's grace. It's not because I'm tough, but it's because Jesus knows how to protect his people. But you saw... You saw the blessings. See, he gets in the camera and he's saying, you know, I just want you to know that see, he thought that he was going to threaten us and that didn't work very well. He's mad because I called his wife exactly what she is. Oh, very Christian. Very Christian. Really? So that's okay. So it's okay. See, do you see him lay hands on that young man? Do you see him do the TD Jakes thing right there? What he said was, I'm going to beat your ASS. That's what he said. If he does that, I'm going to beat his ASS. Well, let me just be real. No, you're not. Like, no, you're not really. But anyway, for you to threaten us, it's okay. See, for see him walking around laying hands on all these kids. For you to threaten us, you're pronouncing cursings on people. That's what witches do. And that's what you are, a bunch of witches. You're a bunch of witches. That's exactly what you are. You're a bunch of witches. I bet you I just said you're a bunch of witches. You just did. I just did. If you had common sense, you'd be able to figure that out. See, now remember, remember also, these people approached us. We didn't approach them. We weren't looking for anything. We rarely are. Satan comes and attacks the gospel preachers all the time, and he sends his devils forth to do it. Always. What you saw there was real witchcraft. That's what you saw. And I knew that it had to go. That they had to get out. Because they were monopolizing all the men. They were taking up all their time. And they had to go. You don't know Jesus. You believe in a false gospel. I've never met a bunch of devil possessed people in my life as much as you. Devil possessed. That's what Absolute that's devil possessed. I called that Jezebel spirit out, and that's what got him mad. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah. That's what got him mad. How do you know when, someone has the Holy Ghost? She's like, you raised oh, no. him from the dead. No, that, <laughs> no. Jacob, they, Jacob asked her, well, how do you know if somebody has the Holy Ghost? And she said, she said, because they raise him from the dead. Hey, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. That Jezebel spirit got called out, and that's why he flipped. Raise them from the dead. So persecuted they. Anyway, so there you go. There you have it. That's your encounter. That's your true encounter with evil. That's your true encounter with wickedness. That is that Antichrist spirit that should come. It is a spirit of deception. It is a spirit of evil. It is a spirit of wickedness. It is a spirit of false prophecy. It is a spirit of, of comforting 
uh, those that should not be comforted in their sin and wickedness. It is that charismatic spirit. It is that evil spirit that should come upon the whole world and that, that spirit of deception. Those charismatics have it. That's who they are. And that's the gospel that they preach. It is a false one. They represent a false Christ. And there you have it. Those are street encounters that you see right there. And there's plenty of others that I could tell you about. But for now, that'll be good. We'll let it go with that here today. Here, let's see. We have been, let's see how long we've been going here. About an hour and 24 minutes. I'm probably going to take off here. And uh, we'll leave it at that for today. But uh, I'll play one more hymn here. And uh, see if I can... find actually you understand though when you see that that they are so close to the truth but they they twist it they twist the scriptures to deceive many that's what they do and it's a, it's a very powerful deception. I always say those Pentecostals or those Charismatics, they are the fake Baptist. Baptist and what they stand for and the truths that they stand for, the Charismatics come along and they have infiltrated, they have maligned, they have misrepresented. And they like to infiltrate Baptist churches, by the way. Charismatics love to do it. I've had them here. I've had a lot of them here. And they are the they are some of the greatest ones that have ever opposed me are charismatics. And ones that I had in this church that I didn't even know they were charismatics for years until they were exposed for what they really were. Yep. So it's amazing when you see it. It really is. But God knows, amen? We gotta keep fighting with the truth. Well, I am on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. How did sin?
I hope you are. You've been saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't, go listen to the sermon, The Gospel, which is able to save your soul, or a number of many sermons that are on our sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley website or Old Paz Baptist Church, or you can visit our website uh, at oldpazbaptistchurch.org. I think that's it. Let me check it to make sure. I'm pretty sure. Yes, oldpazbaptistchurch.org right here. Here's where you can find everything uh, to do with us. Uh, if you'd like to give to our ministry, you can PayPal us right on Sermon Audio at sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley there. You can PayPal us uh, right there, excuse me, on the website. And if you click uh, the Give button right here, it'll take you to PayPal. You can click on PayPal there, and uh, you can give whatever you would like right there. So it is right there, and you put your email address, or you put uh, our address in salvationpreacher at gmail.com, or you can do it right through there, Pastor Cooley at iCloud.com. Those two email addresses, salvationpreacher at gmail.com and Pastor Cooley at iCloud.com, both are hooked up into PayPal, and you can give like that if you'd like to, or you can mail us something. The address is at the bottom of our page right here, 1030 South Highway 3, Northfield, Minnesota. If you'd like to give to our ministry, uh, we do a lot of evangelism. We just recently handed out 16,000 tracts over the last month. Uh, that was uh, nine, almost 10,000, 9,911 at the state fair or somewhere in between there. And then we handed out, uh, let's see, what was it? About 6,000 to 7,000 over the weekend. Last weekend at the defeat of Jesse James Day, that very event that those charismatics, you saw them attacking us, that very event is where we handed out 6,000 tracks or more. So we were out there preaching the gospel. We are into our, uh, soon we'll be into our heaviest season here uh, coming up uh, where we'll be preaching nonstop um, and uh, we'll be preaching a lot of uh, Bible uh, out on the street at um, events, Halloween events. Uh, there's different, uh, we, we go to all the Halloween events and preach the gospel there and uh, try to reach people uh, and hand out a ton of tracts. If you'd like to see our tracts, you can go to oldpazbaptistchurch.org and you can see, we are, that's right, where is that? I think I might have turned off of it. Let's see if it should be right. That's not it. That's for a four-wheeler. Uh, let's see here. I'll get back to there. There we go. You can come here, and then you can see our gospel tracks right here. If you'd like to print these out and hand these out, we are not set up to be able to you know, mail a bunch of tracks off to people. Uh, but uh, if we could, we would. But you can download these, and you can print your own. We know where you can have them printed really cheap, too. So if you would like to print any of our tracks, uh, you know, cheaper or whatever, you can contact us. We can tell you, you know, somebody who can do that for you. Uh, we don't make any money off that. We're just, that's just, they do it for us when we have big events. So uh, that we need uh, a number of gospel tracks. So you could check out all of our tracks right there. And uh, if you'd like to, uh, feel free to do that. And uh, feel free uh, to, and please pray for us. We could use the prayers. All right. God bless you all. Take care. And uh, Tuesday is the next broadcast. Tuesday, I will be dealing with that medical sorcery or witchcraft. I'm going to deal with testings and vac uh, testings and masks, probably, and the 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 fake 
protection or the phony protection of and the phony tests that are out there and uh, just kind of what that's doing, I believe, dealing with the vaccine issue or I'll deal right with the vaccine. So either way, I'm going to deal with one of those. So you pray for us and and God will lead me into what we should do. I wanted to do this today and praise the Lord. We got this done. Special thanks to Brother Joshua with his uh, uh information that he's medical information he's given me uh in his research that he's done and brother andrew special thanks to him for putting all the the uh videos together for me to get uh the video stuff appreciate those men helping me and uh it's a blessing uh that they serve alongside uh for the glory of god all right everybody god bless you all take care we'll see you soon